welcome welcome back to another episode of the college football analytics podcast i'm benji i am jonah and um so we're actually in person today so something a little different also if y'all want to troll me this is not actual off white and i don't care what you say okay <laughs> we were at that bar mitzvah together don't yes worry. um it was it's a bar mitzvah sweatshirt i'm not that type of kid so just kidding. <laughs> um, so our first game we're going to talk about tonight, we currently have Deer King and the Hurricanes visiting the Wolfpack of NC State tonight. What do you expect from Deer King tonight, Jonah? Well, I expect them to do well, but it doesn't have to do so much to beat them. They just want to get the running game going, and I expect a few turnover chains to pop out. Yeah, overall, I feel like the run game, I feel like and you have Harris, who I think is saw just the line's been struggling, but in my opinion... De'Ara King is a very athletic quarterback, and I feel like it would be it wouldn't hurt you so much just to try and establish a bit more of a run game with him. Um. Well, the thing is, he actually has been running, but the thing is, when sometimes over um other teams think about it too much, like in the was it the pick game pick game, they did twice where he they snapped direct to him, he leaned in to run. But then stepped back and threw, and there was a wide open Will Mallory, and there was a wide open Kamron Harris both times. So Miami can get a little creative with that. Yeah, I feel like they have to use it, but overall, I feel like whenever they're going to go out and they're going to go play a game, they have a disadvantage. Because I don't think that Manny Diaz is one of the most solid coaches in the ACC or really even the country. Because. But everyone has to start off somewhere. Where did Nick Saban start off? Being a horrible defensive coordinator at the Browns? What did people say then? And what are people going to say now? It takes time to develop something. It doesn't happen like this. Yeah, so now we are moving on. And I'm just saying, as I've said in the past, I'll say it again. If BYU or Cincinnati wants to make the playoff, they're going to have to beat these good group of five teams like they're looking like a Ohio State or a Clemson you can or never Alabama. compare Cincinnati or BYU to Ohio I State, know. Alabama, or Clemson. That's ridiculous. I know, but what I am saying is if you are a BYU and you're playing Boise State tonight, you're going to have to lo- you're going to have to make it look like it would look like Clemson um playing Boise State compared to BYU playing Boise State. You got to play on that level mm-hmm. against the Power 5 the group of 5 team in order to get a statement win. And honestly, I think BYU is going to have to win by at least mark this 28 points if they want to even be in the conversation. Because honestly, I think BYU is a good team, don't get me wrong, but I'm not confident in them cuz I haven't seen a good win from them. I disagree. You have seen good wins from them, but you, they're not playing good teams. You can't like a like Clemson is a very good team, and we know this because they've beaten good teams. But and it, it, they'll probably prove it this weekend. I think they're still going to win pretty handily. But the thing is with Cincinnati too. No one have they proved that they've played good teams and that they are a good team. They haven't. So, it's fun to see, but we will see what happens. Yeah, also, I think the key for Boise State tonight, you're going to have to be the most offensive and defensively creative tonight. You're going to have to stop Zach Wilson, a clear Heisman contender, really the eyes of most college football, and even most analysts and fans could really come together and say, well, Zach Wilson is a kid who can look like he's not gonna, he might, he's probably not going to win the Heisman, but when comes that December night... Or whenever it's going to be this year, <laughs> and the and people are putting in their ballots, the analysts, the players. I mean, don't be surprised if you see some Zach Wilson ballots in there. Mhm. Hundred percent. Well, of course you're at a disadvantage when you don't play for a Power Five team, but BYU and Cincinnati both look really good this year. It's just going to be tough, and I unfortunately I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Yes. I'm I feel like if you put them in there, you're going to see a repeat of what happened to Washington in 2016. Put them in the playoffs. I guess they deserve it, and they're going to get their butts beaten by a real yeah. team. <laughs> so, here, now we're going to bring up Michigan, Indiana. We're going to save the best for last one, name Clemson. So, Michigan, Indiana. I clearly think, as we were talking earlier tonight, on more of a personal level about college football, I said 
this year, a big year for Indiana was going to come. They were going to end up being one of these elite Big Ten teams. And this is the year. And I now feel like they're going to have to carry all their momentum. They're still going to have to carry that across from the Penn State game and give themselves that mentality they had in that Penn State game. But here's the thing. We don't know how elite Penn State is. We don't. They lost to Indiana. But that is they, not the point, that's what not I'm one saying. Of, let me finish. Okay. Okay. They beat Penn State, who we don't know is that good. They beat Rutgers. Yay! Well done. They beat Rutgers. They haven't played, a, from what we know, because Penn State is still winless, a good team. So, when you have a team like Michigan, who lost to Michigan State, who somehow lost to Rutgers. Imagine losing to Rutgers! Yeah, I don't think either of these teams is elite yet, but I think Indiana definitely has the higher high. And Michigan, we both hate Michigan equally. Yeah, go Bucks. Um, so I, I'm not going to say go Bucks, but I hate Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. I feel like if Indiana were to get a good win on Michigan, and they could somehow, like, it'll be close, then Indiana is, like, winning by a touchdown, then, you know, Joe Milton throws a pick, or Hassan Haskins gets a fumble, and then Indiana's great defense, I think has, they've been looking pretty good this year, picks up a good turnover, then they score another touchdown. That's how I think the game is going to go. Mm-hmm. Then just a field goal at the end for Indiana. I'm going to say win by 17. We're going to save our picks for the end, though. Mm-hmm. So, But they don't have a turnover chain, so nothing is good. Yeah, you, I know you've clearly been very upset by the knockover turnover chains. Knock off. So, now Missouri has a turnover robe. So, but before we go into uh, all these other games, we have to bring up, I want to say, um, a short abbreviation and a number. Pac-12. Pac-12. The Pac-12. The Pac-12 is back this weekend. Maybe. Maybe. Don't, don't count. Don't Two count games are already canceled. Those games... See, I'm going to see... It was the Wa- Washington had a game canceled. Yeah, Um. I believe... Yes, it was, Arizona, Utah was canceled earlier tonight. And then Washington, Cal was canceled. So, overall, I mean, as we said, listen... The Big Ten, it's not as bad in the areas of the Big Ten as it really is for the Pac-12. I didn't know. I was skeptical about this decision from the start, really, because I didn't think the Pac-12 could really follow through with the season because, to be honest, first of all, the schedule is way too short, in my opinion. And second, so it's basically like a good team like Oregon gets a couple cases and they can't play for two weeks. Well, then they're out of the playoff picture. I feel like it was almost useless. But they were never really in the playoff picture. Except they were, considering all the chaos going on this college football season. Listen, I know they had so much opt-outs and that the team's just not going to be the same. All right? But they still have enough in there to go undefeated in Pac-12 play okay, win the Pac-12. The they can easily win the Pac-12 because the Pac-12 is equivalent to Division Three. I'm just kidding. I take that back. Um, the Pac-12 is not going to be that good this year, and I can easily see Oregon coasting to um, a Fiesta Bowl berth because they will be undefeated. Next game we have Cincinnati, the other part of the non-Power 5 lead of the charge to possibly a playoff spot. We have Cincinnati. They're going up against Houston. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think that Desmond Ritter has been playing very well, but I think he's too much of Lamar Jackson. Didn't he have like 300 rushing yards or something like that in the previous game and only 161 passing yards? Like, mm. I get Lamar Jackson as a running quarterback, but throw the ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we have Arizona State USC. Of course, the high interpretive return of Keaton Slovis was really great last season. And, I mean, he doesn't have a shot at the Heisman this season. Obviously, he's short in schedule. I don't think he ever did. But he's just going to be someone that you're going to want to watch. I feel like he's going to get some good balls downfield. He's going to play very well this season. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And now, I want to kind of talk about a dog horse that nobody really saw coming. Um, Liberty. 
Oh, and then I the, thought you were going to say Coastal Carolina. Liberty. I mean, I didn't phrase that right. There's multiple teams that are good and no one saw coming. It's like, oh, seven all over again. Anyway, so Liberty, I feel like Liberty, if they could win this game, they could jump a lot of spots. They're playing a solid Virginia Tech team who's really good. I mean, I think Liberty's looking really good. Hendon Hooker, he definitely is playing very well this season. Can I see Okay, I just want to show you guys. The, uh, Liberty is ranked 25. Virginia Tech is not ranked. ESPN has Virginia Tech as a 90.6% chance to win this game. That just goes to show you how bad college football is this season. That Liberty is ranked. Um, uh, no, I personally think it's interesting. I like seeing these teams. I remember Liberty was like... 27, or not 27, they were like 19-0 and 0 last season in college basketball, not football, basketball. And I was like, well, they should be ranked, but they never got ranked. I remember that's it's, totally it's unrelated, but the I schedule. feel like... Yeah, that was completely unrelated. Yeah. That wasted my time! Then UMass Marshall, another non-Power 5 team we didn't see coming. And then South Alabama, Coastal Carolina. Yeah, I probably should have phrased that better. Coastal Carolina looks really good. Do you know what they remind me of? They remind me of Blue Mountain State. Did you see that? Did you see the thing on uh, College Game Day? I just saw so much of Blue Mountain State in them. It's not even funny. So, um, so I was unable to upload these previous two episodes. So, we kind of got to talk about them. And that team, you guessed it, Ohio State. <sighs> So, first of all, I want to hear your thoughts on Ohio State this season. Can I just remind you? Especially backed by the great quarterback. I know, Justin everyone Felix. just kind of forgot about this, but just change Ohio State for a second. North Carolina. That's the joke. <laughs> they're just so bad. And I called them from the start, is that I said they were going to be good in the next two years, but to call them a top ten team with a corner, quarterback who did meh last year, it's ridiculous. I mean, okay, now back to Ohio State. Yeah, so back to Ohio State. They're back by the same quarterback, Justin Fields, and they actually, for the past two games, have had 200 yard receivers. And what I think now that Waddle is unfortunately out, prayers to him, um, of the college football season, I think that is the best receiver duo in the country with Olave and Wilson. Previously, well, think, two having 100 yard games. I think if. Jamar Chase played. It would be Jamar Chase, and I mean, I I would say that too. But I is Jam, but is Jamar Chase playing? No, he's not. Exactly. So, so we need to focus on what's going on right now. Okay. You could try that's name right. a better receiver duo in the country than uh, Wilson and Olave. D Wiggins and Mike Carley. Who? D. Wiggins and Mike Carley. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely the best two. Yeah. <laughs> then I was a, I was about to go off. Um, this is Miami. Pl- yeah, too. I know. I, I was confused. I was Got like, a homer a little bit. Yeah, I haven't heard of those guys. Like, well, um, whoa! I was dirty. I've heard of Wiggins. I've heard, I haven't heard of the other guy. Mike Carley's better than him. I don't. I don't know. Um. So then they have Master Teague, very good running back. They obviously have Sean Wade, Wyatt Davis, all going to be first round picks. So Lave possibly be a first round pick. The transfer Trey Sermon from Oklahoma, Seven Banks who's really looking up this season, and Haskell Garrett who's comeback kid of the year, in my opinion. Got shot in the face. Didn't know if he was going to play football again. Got a sack in that uh, Nebraska game. Played well. And they have Tommy Togiai. Three sacks in that Penn State game. He was a monster. He was a disturbance. So overall, but I want to hear, what are your thoughts on the Buckeyes? And what are their chances? And what is Fields' chances? I don't think Fields is going to win the Heisman. Because there's Mac Jones. Um, He's been playing longer and, frankly, playing better. But I know you're not going to want to hear that. But that's the truth, whether you like it or not. Um... I mean, I'm not saying this from a Ohio State perspective. I'm saying this from college football's perspective. Okay. Yes, he's been playing young longer. Yes, Matt Jones is going to win the Heisman. Okay, I can say that. But I think just the overall tendencies of Fields and everything give him that edge. I'm not saying that Maybe Fields he's more NFL ready. 
but Mac Jones has been definitely been playing better than. So anyway, the spread for the Ohio State Rutgers game, just to throw that out there, is thirty nine points. That's hilarious. Damn. Let's see his stats in Penn State. Yeah, no, they're actually better than I thought. Three eighteen and four touchdowns. Yeah. Nebraska at home. He two seventy six and two touchdowns. I guess Nebraska you gotta run that up. Not but he only had twenty one passing attempts and only threw one incompletion. Yeah. But I think Mac Jones is playing better. And I think the Buckeyes will probably get... I think it's another lock that they're going to be playing Clemson again in the semifinals, the 2-3 game. And... I think they're destined, really. And maybe Chris Olave won't run the other way. Um, yeah, he switches, I heard he switched his number to number two because he was two yards away from winning the game. <laughs> you have to admit, if I'm an Ohio State fan, that's a tough joke to make. So now we have Georgia, Florida. Um, we're gonna hit this all in lightning round. Um, oh my God! I accidentally saw the Marshall spread by accident. I thought the spread Georgia, Florida was forty four and a half. <laughs> anyway, I was like, "You sure that's the spread or over under?" <laughs> anyway, so overall, who do you have in this game? Florida. Georgia isn't that good. Are you saying that because of Stetson Bennett? <laughs> no, they're not as good as their ranking should show. Their offense is just flat. And their defense is very good. I'm not going to take that away. Their defense is very good, but Kyle Trask is just good. I feel like they're going to have to have a defensive rebound, Florida, in my opinion. I think they're going to have to go out. The line's been good, okay? Line's been good. Mm -hmm. But. But. That's not the whole defense. It's not. And sure, you can have a good defensive line, but you have to have really good. You have to have good corners, especially if you want to keep up in the SEC with how passing and how Mike Leach is coming into the SEC now to keep uh -huh. up with all of that. But the thing is, Georgia has no passing. I know, but I'm saying they, I'm saying this is their opportunity for a defensive rebound. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, I'm, I, I'm probably going to say too. So, now we have Notre Dame Clemson, then we're going to get to our picks, so that, that's it. Notre Dame, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a Clemson hater. I don't hate any college football programs except for Michigan because I'm a Ohio State fan, okay? And Duke. No, I don't hate Duke. I hate Duke. Well, you do. I hate anyway. Duke. So, anyway, but listen, I'm not saying that Notre Dame's going to win this game, but don't be surprised if it's a closer game than you think. Um, I still think Clemson is going to win. Pretty. Oh, I still think Clemson is going to win handily. I think there's only one way to say it, basically. Clemson is just better. Like, you know the games that are just like, it's always going to be like a 10-point difference, and then 17, and then 10, and then 17, and then 10? Yeah. Like, Clemson is just better. They have the recruiting, they have the talent, they, they have the coaching. I'm not, nothing against Notre Dame. Although I also hate Notre Dame. Uh, Clemson is just better. That's the only way... Like Clemson, Miami. Clemson's always going to be one step ahead. I think DJ Ua Angolele, pronounced correctly, uh, is a very good quarterback. He just didn't show it in the first half of BC, the game versus BC. I think that Clemson is going to be very good. He's going. To, they're going to be very good with him next year, unless Trevor Lawrence doesn't want to go to my New York Jets, which I wouldn't blame him for. Um, we're, we're really bad. It's, we're really bad. Um, um, but Stick I think college football. Go on. I think that Clemson will win this game pretty handily. I think it's going to yeah. be like thirteen, maybe seventeen points, because Clemson is yeah. just yeah. better. Here's the thing, though. I think if I think if Clemson comes out and has the first half they had against Boston College against Notre Dame. They'll still find a way to win, because it's Clemson. They're like the Patriots. You doubt them. I, I hate to bring it up, but just think back to the Ohio State game. I'm I'm not trying to make fun of you, but how confident were you that Ohio State was going to win? I was win? very confident. Exactly. Clemson is like the Patriots. They'll always find a way to win. Take out the LSU game, they'll always find a way to win. 
Hunter Renfro. They'll always find a way to win. Exactly. But here's the thing. Okay, now we're going to get to our picks. So, first off the bat, we have Miami NC State. Who are you taking? Go Hanks. You. Same. I'm I'm taking Miami. I'm going to say 28-7. to seven. I will say it's going to be higher score than that. I'd yeah. say 42-13. to 13. Yeah. 13 out of 22. So, now we have BYU, Boise State. Two very, we have basically a great double header tonight. Um, I'm going to say BYU. I'm going to take BYU 45-24. I would say BYU 24. Uh, no, not 24. Uh, BYU 30-17. to 17. Um, next, Ohio State Rutgers. I'm saying this is gonna sound crazy. I'm say Ohio State seventy three, Rutgers ten. I'm gonna say that. Uh, I don't think they score points. Uh, I'd say fifty five zero. Yeah, I, I I'm also feeling that seventy three <laughs> nothing. I I'm also feeling the seventy three nothing. I'm just like, I'm just like it would feel so crazy to. Yeah, even if it's Ohio State Rutgers. Indiana, Michigan. I'm going to say Indiana, 28-25. I'm going to say Indiana, 28-27, because Michigan will miss an easy chip shot to win the game. Like they always do. There's no better way to say it. Yeah. Oh, feels like home. And he bobbles the snap. And the ball is free. Picked up by Michigan State. So, Jalen Watts Jackson. And he scores. I mean, don't upset me. I'm an Ohio State fan. I love that game. Exactly. So now we have West Virginia, Texas. Still, his brothers have been dominant. The defense has been great despite the departure of Vic Koenig. Um, you know, I, I just think they're really good. and But overall, they're not enough to beat Texas. Sorry, Gabe. West Virginia is. Um, yeah, facts. Yeah. <laughs> now we have Kansas um, State, Kansas State, Oklahoma State. I'm going to take Oklahoma State. I'm taking Oklahoma State 49 to 31. Uh, I'll go for an upset. Kansas State 35 31. Mm, interesting. Let's see. South Carolina, Texas a and I'm taking a and I'm going to say. I'm going to say 42-13 A&M. A&M will win 38-20. to 20. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm also changing my pick on the Ohio State game. I'm actually going to say 73 nothing. I can't see Rutgers scoring there. Well, I believe it. Hey, remember Michi- Michigan? Yes. One seventy nine nothing Rutgers? Yeah. And then, let's see, final two games. Stanford, Oregon. I'm going to say, you know what? I think it's going to be a close game. I'm saying Oregon 27, Stanford 10. Oregon 24, Stanford yeah. 3. So, final two games now. I'm going to say Florida 30. I'm saying uh, Florida 38, Georgia 28. See, I was going to do the same thing, but I was going to make it 31 21. Nice. So, now. We have the moment we've been waiting for, Clemson, Notre Dame. I'm going to say, I think it's going to be closer than people think, but I'm not saying that they're going to win, okay? I think, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Clemson, 35, Notre Dame, 21. 45, 28. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. I'm Benji. I'm Jonah. Thanks for watching.